Hey guys, what is up? This is Brenton with RevitFamily.biz and I am here to show you, hands down, the best cabinet families for Revit, period. Um, they save so much time and look so good. Like, I can't, even, I can't find anything that compares to it. So, um, first let me just kind of lay out how they come. There are two different styles of cabinets. Well, I should say there's two different types of cabinets and then each one of those types has three different styles. So there's six different sets of families. Um, so I'm just gonna go through those real quick. The first category of cabinets is the our overlay cabinets. So, you know, the basically where the door is right on top of the, the cabinet box. And then there's inset cabinets, um, which are the, it seems like they're making, they're kind of becoming trendy in the last probably five years or so, where there's a frame and then the doors are inset inside that frame. So each one of those has three styles. So what you're looking at here are overlay cabinets and they are shaker style. So that's the first style. And, and let me flip through here. I can show you the other ones. <clears throat> then there's a, a modern style. Again, this is overlay. And then after that, we have a traditional style of overlay cabinets that kind of has like the raised panel look. And then the columns and divider panels are a little bit decorative with like rosettes and stuff. Then we get into the inset cabinets. This is a shaker inset cabinet. And then there is a shaker inset cabinet, but the frame is beaded. Um, some of you may or may not use these in your projects, but you can see if we zoom in, there's this bead along the edge of the frame, whereas typically um, the inset cabinets don't have that bead. And then the last one is a traditional inset cabinet. So again, like your traditional raised panel, but inset into a frame. So those are the six different types you can get. And I'm just gonna run you through these. So each set of families, when you buy a style of families, comes with around 73, depending like um, the modern is a little more simplistic. And so it doesn't have all of the same cabinets as the other styles, but around 73 different cabinets, um, which is crazy because if you had to look for these cabinets, which is what I was doing, um, one, they're hard to find. There are some cabinets that you just can't find. And then there are other cabinets that even when you find them, they are just horrible. They look bad and the out of the box ones from Revit are horrible. Uh, but these ones you can show a client, you can render, you they are all sorts of parametric and I will dive into that. But like I said, 73 family and then they come with another 25 families nested inside them. That's like hardware and the panels, you know, the front panels, um, all that. It's another 25 cabinets. So it's like 95 cabinets and these have been around, They in, these like incorporate four years worth of user feedback. These have been sold like in different countries, thousands of people have tested these and given me feedback. And I've been doing this for like four or five years now, depending on which family type you're looking at. And so these are pretty robust. You're not gonna find a better family. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's look at the cabinets that come in a style. So let's start with base cabinets. You're gonna get like your standard, everything you would imagine, uh, you know, like the sinks, the cooktops, your double doors, your single doors, and then you know your single door with a drawer on top, double doors with a drawer on top, your stack of drawers, just an open base cabinet. Um, those all come in and then they have a splay corner cabinet and we have an L-shaped corner cabinet. And then the cool thing um, about some of these, like the sink cabinets and the cooktop cabinets, those cut automatically the countertop. And the cooktop comes embedded inside the family and the sinks come inside the family. So I don't know if you've used other uh, cabinet families, but typically you put the, the sink family in, but then you also have to go get the sink and put the sink in, and then you have to cut a hole in the countertop. This makes that all way simpler. All you have to do is place the sink cabinet. It's got the sink already in there for you, and you just have to cut geometry and it cuts a hole into the cabinet. I'll show you that later, but they're great. And then we also have a base cabinet with a microwave in it because that is that was a highly requested cabinet that I got pretty often. And then there's other stuff like a decorative divider panels, a standard divider panel, an island column panel, or an island, just a column, and then fillers, you know, um, just your standard filler. <clears throat> and then there's uh, desk panels, um, which um, you can adjust, but I use these mostly, like I said, for desks or for ADA spaces, these uh, where you have to have knee clearance underneath, these front panels come in pretty handy. Then in addition to like your normal cabinets, you get a whole series of floating cabinets, um, which again have become really trendy, especially in bathrooms right now, to have these different types of floating. So you have almost every one of the items you see below, you have in a floating cabinet. 
and uh, including an ADA sink and then a variety of bathroom sinks. <clears throat> and if we move on to tall cabinets, there's again a good variety of tall cabinets. And again, similar to the cooktops, there's oven cabinets and it comes embedded with the ovens already in it. So you don't have to leave a hole for the oven and then go find an oven family and then insert it into that manually. It all just loads in like that. And I'll go over those in just a sec um, because there's a whole variety of what it comes loaded with. Uh, and then, you know, you got your tall cabinets with drawers, uh, doors and drawers. And if we move on from tall cabinets, you can see what we have here, but your typical upper cabinets, an open, a double, a single door, uh, you know, your corner cabinets, and then like a horror, a vertical, a vertical swing um, door. And then you've got your, a variety of, you got two different kinds of hoods, one with an arch, one with just a, a straight across, and those are for um, ranges or, or cooktops. Then there's four different window family, uh, you know, window cabinets that go across your windows, or I use them like these two, I use often for vanities and bathrooms, and then I put a mirror behind it. But you have a, a good amount of wall, you know, wall hung cabinets, uppers that you can choose from, and then, you know, divider panels and fillers, just like all the other types. <clears throat> so uh, after that, you have parts, because there are times every once in a while, given all, you know, 73 families, that should cover you 90% of the time. But if there is a cabinet that still isn't there, you can um, start with a base, do an in-place family, you know, model the box, and then you can still use our doors and our drawers and our just the these panels, right? I especially like to use these panels. It's a faced base family, so you can slap it on the side of anything. And I like to use this on islands, on the end of islands, where you need a decorative panel so the side of the cabinet isn't showing, the base cabinet. Or on the end of tall cabinets, when the, when the cabinets end, again, you can slap four of these on the end, and I'll show you that later, so that the ends are decorative. Um, you can do a door as well. So if you did an open cabinet and you needed a door, you can slap this on the face of the door of a custom cabinet. And then the drawers are the same way, but the drawers are cool because you can literally tell them how many drawers you want. So we've got three now, if we wanted four, we can add another and it just dynamically adds those in for you. Then it comes with a corbel floating shelf. And then these are kind of for closets, just your standard shelf and divider. And then a, a hanger rod for if you want to do um, a closet. After that, we have countertops. So it comes, the set, all sets come with a straight counter, an L shape and a U shape. And of course, everything's adjustable. And I can, we'll go over that in depth later. So let's take a look at some of the more complex families. Uh, let's start with the cooktops. So we tried to include any kind of cooktop you'd want. So 24 inch wide, 30 inch wide, and then even a 36 inch wide cooktop here. And those are all kind of a standard depth cooktop. And then if you want to get into a fancier cooktop, we have the fancier cooktops with the front panels. Um, and then those start at 30 inches, 36, and this goes to 48 inches. And th this is a really big industrial cooktop. And, and then underneath it are just some doors. But we also, if we go back over here, we have all those same types, but with drawers underneath. So if you didn't want the double doors and you wanted drawers underneath, you have that option as well. And then sinks, we've got a variety of sinks. Um, Oh, before I do that, let me just show you. So I, you heard me say earlier, our sinks are great because they come with the cabinet. You just place the cabinet and then this is what it looks like with the countertop on top. All you have to do is hit the cut geometry command and you click the countertop and then you click the cabinet and it cuts the hole for you. And then if you move the cabinet, the hole moves with the cabinet because a classic problem you have with most sink cabinets is because the sink isn't tied to the cabinet and it's not tied and it's not cutting through the countertop, when you move the sink, you have to go in and edit your hole in the countertop and it's just annoying. So you don't have any of that problem here. All right, so the variety of sinks we have, we have some kitchen sinks, a smaller kitchen sink, and then we have bigger, two bigger kitchen sinks, one with a divider and one without a divider. And then a, a variety of bathroom sinks around a square and then kind of a set on top, double and single <clears throat> sink. And then of course, with all of these, if you have a sink or hardware that you wanna use, no problem. You can go in here and you can, um, if you go to the type properties, you can shut off the sink. Oops, show sink. We'll just shut that off. And then you would, you also would unjoin. Right now, the sink is still cutting the cabinet. You'd unjoin that, but you always have the option of having no sink shown. And then you can go back to the way you 
you know, normally did things before these cabinets. And you can pick your own sink family. You can pick your own hardware for the sink or fixture, I should say. And so it's no problem. If you don't like what we have, you can always make it disappear. They all have visibility parameters. <clears throat> all right, so let's move on to the tall cabinets. These were the ones I hated the most putting in because you would put a tall cabinet and then usually I could never find tall cabinets that had a hole in them so that I could put, you know, double ovens or a single oven. I never had that option. So I'd have to make these custom in place or something really quickly because I... The other thing I hated is you're just trying to design a house. I don't want to spend a, a whole day searching for millwork and putting the millwork in. This will save you that time. You have almost every cabinet you can imagine. And so same with the ovens. There's any configuration you could even think of. Um, double ovens, single ovens, double ovens with a microwave, microwave and a single oven, you know, e everything. And then you have the option of having drawers below the, the oven or the appliance or having doors below it. And it comes in all varieties. There's a 30 inch wide microwave. There's a 24 inch wide microwave. Um, and anyways, so these are all the ones that come preloaded. So it should be as quick as just picking which one you want and placing it in. No searching, no, in, no trying to position appliances into a, a tall cabinet. So those are the more complicated families. And then what else comes with this is this example file that I'm showing you. So you can kind of see <clears throat> all the different scenarios you can use these cabinets in. Here we have like an ADA situation. We have an ADA sink and then knee space underneath the cooktop. And all of these cabinets come already in standard sizes, you know, so like um, vanity height, kitchen height, ADA height, desk height, those are all built in and you can load those in at the right height so you don't have to constantly keep trying to change the families as well. All right, so then you can see, here's a kitchen example. You've got on the uppers, you can do two, two rows. Um, they come with crown and we'll get into that too, but you can make a very nice kitchen. Another hard to find cabinet is what I call a hidden pantry. So basically this isn't so much a cabinet as it is a door that looks like it's a cabinet. And what it's doing is it's hiding the doorway for this, this pantry here. So I don't know if you've seen these in real life. Um, they're popular where I'm from. Um, and this whole, basically this whole front swings open like a door and allows the person to get into the pantry, but it looks really concealed when you're in the kitchen. Then moving on to, uh, it's really easy to make built-in desks or built-in entertainment centers. If we look over here, here's an example entertainment center built with cabinets or a mud room area with cubbies and shelves. Um, and then another more modern style TV area. Then we can look at some examples, <clears throat> kind of like a formal bathroom or a floating cabinet bathroom <clears throat> and then closets again are also pretty easy here's just your standard closet and then if you want to do a more in-depth walk-in closet you could do something like this but the variety of cabinets allows you to do almost anything you could think of and do it quickly all right so now you've seen the 3d models the actual families that are available let's talk about some of their features so let's hop into the base cabinets um, so uh, the base cabinets, standard, out of the box, when you buy these, you can change all of the hardware. So the hardware, there's nested different, in fact, let me show you that first. If we look down at the hardware, there's 18 different pieces of hardware that come embedded in the families, nested. And so you can change the hardware out for any of these that you see here. And if you really have hardware you love already, or that's a standard in your company or you know across your work that you do, you can also import that into these models and make them available. So you can nest your hardware into these models if you'd like. It requires a little bit of skill with families, but you can do it. So let's go back to the base cabinets and oops, the base feature. So you can switch out the hardware. You can also adjust the hardware location. So you can center it in the drawer, or you could move it to the top and then offset it whatever distance you want. The doors, same way, you can offset them uh, on the X axis or the Y axis, so up and down, left and right. Um, the hardware is also, it's got a visibility parameter so you can turn it on or off. So if we just wanna look at that, let's just pick that. If we look over here at the hardware style, let's just pick a different style right here. Instead of a knob, maybe we want a cup. So we'll pick that. 
And then of course the materials are all parametric, the, the height, width, depth of the cabinets, all parametric. If you buy the shaker styles, the, the panels that are shown on the front of the cabinets, those are also parametric. Let me restate that. All of the cabinets, you can switch out the panels on the drawers and the doors, but only the shaker style comes preloaded with nested families. Um, traditional and modern, those all have a set amount. They just have one panel loaded in already. So you can load your own into any of these. But again, um, you'll want to watch my other videos on how to do that because it can be a little tricky. So, But it can be done if you have your own company standards that you want inside these. Uh, okay, uh, and visibility, like we can just shut the hardware off if we don't want it there. So let's turn that back on. All right. What else do we have? In elevation, you can see the door swing symbol. That again is a visibility parameter. If you don't want that to show up in your elevations, you can shut that off. It's on by default. The other thing you can do is I know in some European countries, your door symbols in elevation um, are reversed to the American standard, which is what I have here. Um, so technically the hinge side isn't the point of the arrow. It's the hinge side would be the open end of the arrow. So there is a parameter in here. If we, oh, if we click on this cabinet, it says, um, show door swing symbol flipped. And if you click that, it will flip the door symbol for you. So if you're in a European country that uses that standard, it is easy to convert. Um, I should say by default, these all come in imperial units, but these families also come with type catalogs so that you can import them with metric units. And I will show you that later as well when we talk about type catalogs. Um, you can adjust the toe kick height and depth. You can also adjust visibility in floor plan. So we can see a floor plan here and you can shut off the outline underneath the cabinet or you can turn it on. Some people like to show the, the lower cabinets in plan. Some people don't like that, but it is a visibility parameter that you can shut on and off. So I can just shut that off real easy. The other thing you can do is turn on and off the door swing symbols. Some people do not like to see the door swing and other people do. So again, if you go over here to show door swing symbol in plan, you can turn that on or off and you can adjust the angle in which the door swings. So if you just want 30 degrees or maybe you want 90 degrees, you can adjust that. All right, let's look at the tall cabinets. The tall cabinets have the a couple additional parameters and that is the crown molding. You can change the height of the crown. You can turn the crown on and off. You can turn the crown on on the front, but not the sides. Or maybe you just want the front left side or front and right side. You can pick all that. So if I click on this family here, uh, you can see right here, show, crunt, or show crown on the front, left or right. So let's just turn off the right side and let it regenerate. And you can see that it shuts it off on the right side. So if you have cabinets side by side, you can have an end cabinet where the crown wraps around or you can shut it off altogether and have no crown. And then all the other parameters from the base cabinets are also in here, height, width, depth, toe kick height. Um, where you see cabinets with drawers, you can easily change the number of drawers. So if we just wanted two drawers here, we just change it to two and it adjusts. You can set this divider height. If you wanted the upper half to go lower, you could do that. Or if you want it to move higher, so it's just called division height. Let's say we wanted it at three, eight. We can do that and it'll adjust the shelves up or the drawers up. Uh, the other thing you can do in any cabinet with shelves is the number of shelves is also adjustable. So say we wanted five shelves here, we can just knock it up to five and it changes. You can hide or show the door, the upper or lower doors um, so that you can make different combinations. Maybe you just want shelves above, but drawers below or doors below, you can make that combination. Um, you can also change out these panels, like I said. So if you wanted the upper panels to be arched, it includes an arched panel. So if you want a more decorative and don't want the straight, you can also change the material of the, the inner panel. So if you wanted glass instead of wood, you can do that as well. So very parametric. And then the, the <clears throat> upper cabinets, the, the ones that are hung on the wall, have basically all the same parameters that we've already talked about. Plus they have an additional parameter for the base. There's a little bit of base trim at the bottom. And so you can turn that on and off. So let's just shut that off on this cabinet to show you what it looks like. And you can see the base goes away. Some cabinet makers like this, some cabinets don't, but it conceals things like under counter lighting. And so that is also an option in these cabinets. All right, so now you've seen how parametric they are as far as what they show and don't show. Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about how to load them. So these families come with type catalogs. And you may or may not be familiar with this concept, but what it does is it's, it's like if you've ever loaded structural members into Revit, 
uh, when you load the family, you get this long list and you can select what, what types of that family you want loaded in. And basically what it does is it saves space in your project. Because there's so many options for cabinets, not only are there 73 different cabinets that you're loading in, but each cabinet can come in, you know, dozens of sizes. So you, you do almost, you do 73 times a dozen and you have a lot of families being loaded into your project. So I'm just going to show you, if you use the load family command, the win this window comes up and then you can pick what family you want to load in. So I'm just going to show you, let's do a sink family, click open and you get this dialog box. And so now you can only, you can pick just the stuff that applies to you. If you know in this project, you're not doing ADA sinks and all of your sinks are going to be 36 inches high, you can just pick the sinks that are 36 inches high and only load those into your project. It saves, again, space. The other thing it does is if you want to make mass changes to these cabinets, um, if you didn't have type catalogs, making changes would be very time consuming. You can make mass changes to the families much faster with the type catalogs. That's a separate video that I'll make, um, but that's another added benefit to why these are loaded with a type catalog. The next thing is <clears throat> all of these families are not hosted to anything. So they're not wall-based, they're not floor-based. It makes it so you can move them around anywhere you want, which in my experience, I mean, I have like I've been designing in Revit for probably 15 years now, and I don't really get benefit from having them hosted to walls. So, but what does happen is anytime I try to make a desk that's in the middle of a room, or if I try to make an island, it is a real big mess when all of your cabinets are wall-based families, because then you have to figure out how to put a wall in the middle of your, your island, and then you have to hide that wall or make it short or somehow make it invisible and it's just really annoying. So these cabinets all move around freely. And then you always have the option, if you want to make it based or hosted to a wall, you can associate it with a wall if you want to, and that's up to you. But the problem is, with if we started with a wall-based family, it's always going to be a wall-based family. There's no way to separate it from the wall. So that is another um, feature of these cabinets. <clears throat> so the last thing you're gonna be wanting to know is where to get them. If you've held on for this long, then you're probably interested. You can get them at revitfamily.biz. I'll put a link down in the description. Feel free to go over there and check out these families. We also sell other families and these all coordinate together. They all function similarly. They're all very parametric. They are well thought out. Like I said, they, they have four years worth of customer feedback and user feedback that are built into them. And we also try to price them as affordably as possible. Basically, like I said, there's 73 families in each you know bundle and plus another 25 nested inside of that. So you're looking at almost a hundred families you get with this download. And if you do, if you divide the amount of families you get by the price, they're usually like $2 a family, which in my experience, I spend more time and money searching for a free family than $2 an hour. Like if I paid a drafter to search for a free family, he would probably spend more than $2 worth of time finding that free family. So, and then once you buy it, it's yours forever. So you'll never have to search again. So check our families out. Um, you will love them. I guarantee it they will save you time and pay for themselves just in time and headache. Um, let me know what you think. Check out our families. Thanks for watching.